No quad. No quad. Mr. P is going down. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, foul, get that foul. biscuit over there. <laughs> oh, almost, man. almost. Oh, I, meant, I, meant. I got an extra defensive man back here, don't I, for that you do. white marker. Oh, no. Oh, wait. Uh, oh, the... What? I didn't foul. Wait. I think we're supposed to start your show now. <laughs> we forgot all about the show. <laughs> Uh, to be well, welcome to, to be Unlocking continued. Science. Our goal is to glorify God Our by goal. studying and enjoying and just getting to know all about his amazing creation. I'm your host, Mr. P, and I'm joined today by my competitive friend, Dr. Danny Faulkner, and he's going to be helping us think about magnetism a little bit today. So as you think about the idea of magnets, what are some of the most interesting things you can think about magnets? Well, they're like magic. They reach through air, through mm -hmm. space, and do things. They attract, they repel, they can make things spin. We've got some other applications we're going to talk about next week, mm -hmm. dealing with motors and things like that. Yep. They are way cool. You know, if God didn't make magnets the way they work, we wouldn't have electricity. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't have motors. Electric motors. Oh, yeah. We wouldn't have all sorts of things. So I'm really thankful. It's kind of complicated the way it works. We wouldn't have... Compasses? No, no, not. Oh, this wait, time. the other type of compass. That's right, the other type. <laughs> but uh, really, uh, uh, God knew what He was doing when He put the world together. Magnets are some of the coolest things you'll encounter. In Absolutely. So our our goal today, this is our hands-on episode, and this is looking back to our episode opposites attract, and we're going to be talking about some of the um, features of magnetism that we take advantage of in different ways. So our goal with this episode is to give you some hands-on activities that you can do to explore all these different areas of magnetism and how they work. So when uh, you go to our website, you can download a PDF document that'll have some different activities for you to do. One of the activities we've got for you is to create a maze. So this is a pretty simple activity and all you really need is a blank piece of cardboard or a shoe box or a piece of cardstock, something rigid like this and a few markers and a couple magnets. And all you're going to do is use these markers to draw some type of maze or a path that you can follow. Now with these markers, I wanted a fairly wide path. So if you've got younger kids, uh, you might want a wider path for them to be able to follow. But if you've got teens or others, you might be able to make a narrow path and make it a little bit more challenging. So I've taped these two markers together and all I did was got them at the same length so that when I open the caps, I can trace a path along here and I can make some wiggles and some turns and do all kinds of interesting things and just make a pathway, whatever pattern you want to make, and use that as a pathway to follow, follow the, the maze, follow the path, and work your way around this. So here's one that I created to show you as an example. So we've got the start down here and walking along the path, and then there's a little pitfall trap over here. So <laughs> if you fall into pitfall, you, you have to go back and start from the beginning. A nice sharp angle, you've gotta go around some zigzags. You could even do something like taping a magnet or something right inside of here that's going to tend to attract the ball as it's moving around. And what we want you to do with this is try to explore some different types of activities that you could do with this. So let's say I had something like these really strong neodymium magnets and I put a ball bearing on top of here. It's going to attract this ball bearing. I need like four more hands here or something. Mm -hmm. It's going to attract that ball bearing very strong. And it's going to be pretty easy for me to move. And if this were taped down here, this would be an obstacle that I'd have to avoid. And I can move around the path and I could do things like timing myself, how long it took me to do it. I could take an average of that and create a little data table. I could try it with my dominant hand or my non-dominant hand. You compete I against your brothers and sisters. Compete against the family members, those types of things. And then I could even try it with something like a weaker magnet. Let's grab this one here is a magnet off my toolbox. I used to hang things on the side of my toolbox, but it's a lot weaker. So if I move too quickly, it's you can tell it's wobbling all over the place. So it's much more challenging. You could lose it to this magnet. And it could get stuck over on the side and then I have to start over again. So you can come up with all kinds of different challenges and ways to, to measure and have fun with this. Can you think of any other ideas with that? Yeah, that's not a good thing to do. Uh, 
Again, you can keep track of who's ahead, who's not, mm -hmm. and get points. Maybe make com different levels of competition. The younger kids get a smaller track, and the older yeah. ones get, mm -hmm. uh, to me, they get wider tracks, and the older kids get younger tracks. A little bit and narrower. The parents get the mm -hmm. narrowest. Okay. Yes. Mom and Dad, you have to follow Handicap. a pencil line. Hand account. Yeah. <laughs> so these are just fun activities you can do, and come up with different <laughs> ways to gather data about this, and then you could make some averages, average of your times right-handed, average of your times left-handed, those types of things. Let's look for trends in your data. So fun activity there. Um, other things that you could do, there are all kinds of different games that are available. Like this game we're playing over here, here is called Clask. So this is a game board you can purchase and it's basically got a magnetic post underneath and then right up under here, you move this and it moves your little player around the surface. And you've got to navigate the ball so it's kind of like soccer, you're trying to put the, the ball over into the goal. And then these little biscuits in the middle, if they stick to you, if you get too close to them, um, they can attract to you, and unless your magnet is turned the right way, then you can push <laughs> them and force them away. But if you get two of them stuck to you, your opponent gets a point and things like that. You could invent your own game. So maybe you're gonna make, uh, take a shoe box and do something similar to this, or you could uh, draw some different other types of games where you have to roll a ball bearing down the track and not hit the magnets all types of different things that you can do. So the main thing we want you to do is to be curious. Why do you think it's so important for people to be curious about all of these things? Well, that's because God made a wonderful creation for us. And I think it's part of his, his uh, command to us, our, our dominion command to mm -hmm. subdue the earth. I think that uh, God wants us to explore his creation. He wants us to find out more about how he did these things. There was a saying early in the history of science 400 years ago, thinking God's thoughts after him. We've mm -hmm. kind of lost sight of that, many scientists have, but I think as creationists and as biblical people, we should have that first and foremost in all we do. So I, I view the work I do in a worshipful way. It is my calling. Mm -hmm. It's what the Lord wants me to do. And kids, you can do this too. It, you don't have to do it professionally, but you can do it as a hobby. Yeah, so you've been studying astrophysics for decades. 50, 50 years. Yeah. 50 years, and you've figured everything out. You know how it all works, right? <laughs> I wish I did. <laughs> But there's always, there's always more questions. When you answer a question, you end up with 10 more. Yeah. And it's, it's just a thrilling thing to do. Yeah, and that's why I love doing shows like this where we get to show you some of these cool things, the way God has made an amazing creation to help spark that curiosity in you, to get you engaged in understanding more about God's creation and learning about Him. And through that, we get to worship and glorify Him in doing all of those things. We can create technologies from all of these things that give us benefits in the way that we do work. We can enjoy things, just having a fun game with these amazing little magnets and playing together. Um, we can just do all kinds of interesting things. We can make great tools. So we've got screwdrivers that are magnetic. And this handy tool, why don't you show how that well, thing works? I've never works. seen one of these. Did you bring this from home? Yes. I've so never seen one. My father-in-law used to own a lumber yard, and this was sitting by the nail scale. Yep. And we had bins full of nails, and we just grabbed the big heavy magnet. <laughs> <I> did. <laughs> we had bins full of nails, and if you reached into the nails, it would really poke your fingers and be a little bit painful. I've done that before myself a few times. Something like this really sharp yeah. screw, that would be very painful. So if there was a bin full of nails or paper clips, you could bring that in. So you, 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 you um, have the magnet pulled up like this with your hand. You pull it up with your, your fingertips so it's not engaged. I come down really and there's nothing going on. So if I lower it, suddenly I pick up a bunch of these paper clips or nails. They're nails. I can then take them, <laughs> take them over to, uh, to where I want to put them, like a sack or a box for a customer. Mm -hmm. And I simply hold it over and I pull the the. Uh, the uh, Oh, those are so light that they're not really falling stick. off. They work yeah. best with these, I guess. Yeah, let's pull a few of these out and we can show okay, put them right there. Maybe. So if we throw some of these All nails right. and screws down here, All right. that little plastic ball is not going to get picked so up. So I want to pick these up for a customer. So they don't stick now, but when I put down all the way, they do, they do stick. And then when I get them where I want them, I just pull the handle up and they fall off. And that's that clever. Saves, I'd never seen one until yeah, today. Save lots of pokes in your fingers so, oh, yeah. to be able to get those. <laughs> now we're having trouble over here. We've been having that type of trouble with these very oh. strong magnets. Now these are neodymium magnets. They're extra strong compared to the, the standard type of iron magnets that we get. They have neodymium embedded in them as part of their alloy. And, and earlier I put all six of them together <laughs> and all it was hard. You couldn't pull them So apart. if we stuck all of these together, they're very challenging to get apart. 
but I'm tough enough to do it. So. Uh -huh. You're cheating too. <laughs> <laughs> I separate them with a yeah. little plastic magnet. These were created, but they have a technological disadvantage. They're very strong, but if they get heated, they lose their magnetic property and then they don't function well. So those are different technological things that we can do. All right, the third activity, activity we've got for you in the handout is a scavenger hunt. So you're gonna take a magnet, preferably a strong magnet like this, so you can use a weaker one, something you might have on your fridge that holds up notebooks or things like that, and notepads. Take that around and you're gonna explore all types of different metals and different things and see if you can determine whether they have iron in them. So we talked about the idea of a dipole. That was our big science word of the day in the episode. And because a magnet has, creates this dipole moment and it has a, a north and a south pole, it will attract to certain metals. Will it attract to every metal? No. Okay, and your job is to figure out which metals it's gonna to stick to and which things around your house or around um, your neighborhood are actually magnetic and those things can be attracted to. So this is just a scavenger hunt to figure out more about those. You know, my father, early in his retirement, ran a small engine shop and uh, we would have scrap engines that weren't any good anymore, mm -hmm. small engines up a lawnmowers and things. And my dad wanted to recycle them, but they were, they were cast iron and mm -hmm. you didn't want to throw in things that didn't belong. And so what he would do is he had, a, he had a magnet and he would just run over the thing and anything that was attractive, was, he'd leave and then anything that wasn't attractive, he'd take off. Mm -hmm. But most of those things that he took off were aluminum, which is worth even more. So you'd <laughs> separate more. those out. He just did a magnet. It took him just a minute to, to clean off an engine that way. Yeah. And uh, that, mm -hmm. that's a very useful sort of tool. Yep. And if you've ever wondered how a magnet's made, we've got a link in that, in that download to take you to a YouTube video that'll show you how magnets are made. So how they might make magnets like these that have that north and south pole attraction. What have you got there? These little, really strong <laughs> magnets. They're really kind of odd shaped. I think these are cool. I first saw these probably 20 years ago. And you separate them by a small distance in your hand. And then you throw them up. And hopefully they'll clatter and make a lot of noise. That uh, didn't really work. Not too much. But they'll kind of spin next spin to one Spin around another. and make a lot of noise sometimes. And it kind of shut up fast. Can you, can you make it happen? <laughs> I don't know. I haven't tried that for a long time. You know, we did so, this first, first thing this afternoon and it worked pretty well. Were there, were there toys like this when you were a kid? No, these are all new. <laughs> Magnets were pretty weak when you were younger. Oh, that's better. There we go. That's so we better. get that little vibration. That kind of rattling forth. sound. All kinds Very of fun distinctive. things. What's this over here you got? Um, just a fun little sculpture thing that my kids had when they were younger, and my boys would build little pyramids and different structures out of those types of things. Hmm. So there are all kinds of cool things these, we can do with magnets. These toys didn't exist when I was a kid either. Yeah, there probably weren't. The magnets that were available when you were a kid probably weren't strong enough to be able to do that. We, didn't the have, technology. we called them lodestone, not magnets back then. Yeah. It was a long time ago. <laughs> a long time ago, if that's the case. <laughs> all right, so we've got a little teaser for you. We're going to be doing another episode next week where we're going to talk about the relationship between magnetism and electricity. Okay. I've got a, I want you to make a prediction. I've got a magnet here and I've got a copper tube over here. So let's take this copper tube. And if I were to stick this to here, you can see the magnet does not stick to the copper. So copper is not a magnetic metal. If I drop this, how long does it take to go the distance of that tube? Less than a second. Yeah. Very, very quickly. Very short, very okay. Fast. So I want you to make a prediction. If I drop this magnet down through this tube, it's just big enough to fit down through there, how long do you think it's gonna to take to fall through the bottom? All right, you got your prediction? Ready, go. Two, three, four, five, six, and I think it's, it's still not even down seven. <laughs> I think you got the bird in on the top, so I hear it. There it is, it's on the bottom now. Okay, it's on the bottom now. Let's flip it over and do it the other way. It's stuck now. We always have this trouble. <laughs> it never, it never, it never does this. It never does rehearsal. this when you're doing it in rehearsal. Let's see if we can knock it through the tube there. Oh, now we got the skewer stuck in there. Here, we'll do this. Attract it to there. Yeah. Okay. So if we drop this down through here, it's going to move very slowly. It doesn't fall at the same rate. That it does if we did it right beside it. Why? It's have magic. To wait, it's have magic. Have to wait till it's next magic. week. <laughs> what else have you got over here? Well, we got this uh, little thing here, a little lev train. Or we want to do the motor first. Oh, uh, that train's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So um, I think this cell might be the best. Let's yeah. give that a try. Got the orientations right. Battery there. Should be that way, I believe. Okay, let's zoom in on this if you don't mind. And I can put it in. We may have to flip the magnets if we don't have them going the right. Oh, Oops, flip, stick it in that end. There oh. we go. Why does this happen? It's getting caught. That it's cool? moving through all by itself. Now it's going the opposite direction, all by itself. Why does that happen? Hmm. Again, we're going to talk about that next week. All right, one more thing to give you a teaser when that gets through here. Oh, yeah, if we this take is... this, I can turn this battery and this magnet into a motor. Like that. Without touching it, it's going to begin spinning. We give it a little nudge to get it going. And it will keep itself spinning using the electric charge from the battery and the magnet. Picking up speed now. Amazing things that God's created for us to be able to explore and take advantage of in different technological ways. So we hope you'll have an opportunity to do some of these hands-on activities that you'll just be encouraged to explore all of God's amazing creation every day, all day, understanding more and more about Him so you can glorify Him. And until we see you next time, do just that. Get out and explore all of His amazing creation.